Hi there! Welcome to today's video. This is hopefully the last video in the series of videos for implementing direct speech-to-speech -speech translation with discrete units paper. So let's recap what we have done so far and then we will go through the details of the next step in this video. So what we have done so far is we prepared and formatted that data in the first video and then we used that data to train a model specifically the speech to unit translation model that takes the speech in the source language and it predicts the discrete units in the target language finally in the third video we took that trained model and we did the inference on a test set so in today's video well, what we are going to do is the evaluation so remember at the end of this inference step we had the waveform so we had the speech in the target language so how do we evaluate that speech is what we are going to focus on in this video before we go here to the evaluation step let's go back and recap what we did during the inference so let's go back to the folder. So this, during the inference step, we got three things. The first thing was this file called generate-test.txt. And if we go through this file, we'll notice that for each sample, there, there are four things. So let me just jump to the top. So example for sample number 350, I have four items. So I have T dash, H dash, D dash, P dash, and then similarly for sample number 180, I have four items. T dash, H dash, D dash, P dash. So what we are interested in is this D dash entry because this is the sequence of discrete units for the target language that is predicted by the model. And this is what we want to verify. We want to verify if this, this predicted target discrete unit is actually correct. So what we did next was from this file, we created another file called generate-test.unit. So let's open this up. So this test.unit file is nothing but we simply extract all of the d dash entries from this text file. So I will extract d dash 180 entry. Basically, not all of this. I'm just going to extract the sequence of discrete units, not the prefix. And then I'm going similarly, I'm going to extract this entry. So anything that is with a d dash, I'm going to extract all of those and this unit file dot unit file contains nothing but only the d dash entries from the text file and the other important thing to note is that here as you notice in the text file uh, things are not sorted here you have the sample number 350 first and then you have sample number 180 and then you have sample number 182 so they're not sorted in the unit file though everything is sorted so the first sequence here corresponds to sample number zero and the second corresponds to sample number one so forth and so on so if we want to verify let's just take a quick let's just do a quick check so let me just copy this from the unit file and if i try to search for this in the text file what i should see is that that should correspond to d dash entry in this file so let's verify and here we go similarly if i take the next sample which is sample number one if we go with the zero index if i say here and then i try to search for that in this file it should correspond to d dash one oops let me just go back Okay, D dash one. So from here on, we can just forget this text file because this unit file contains the sequence of discrete units as predicted by the model, and these are sorted. 
So then we passed on everything that's in this file to a vocoder and then the vocoder gave us the waveforms that correspond to the sequence of these discrete units. So the first sequence here So the first sequence here in this file, if I give this to the vocoder, it will give me this waveform called 0 underscore bread dot wav. Similarly, if I give it the second waveform, it's going to give me the waveform 1 underscore bread dot wav. So now in order to evaluate that this, these discrete units are actually correct, what we can do is we can either have a listen at each of these wave files and verify that the speech in these wave files is, is actually the speech in the um, in the ground truth data that we had the original data so we can do that but that may not be a very good way to evaluate the model because listening to each one first of all it's tedious because if the sample size in the test set is huge, uh, it's just not very feasible to go through and listen each one of these files. Secondly, it's also n very subjective. So we need to have a better way to evaluate the model. So that's the method that we are going to just use in today's video and if try to evaluate the model. So basically, this, is, this section is what we are going to focus on. So how do we evaluate? The authors of this paper and also other papers uh, in the same domain, what they use is, the technique that they use is pretty simple. So what they do is they take these predicted waveforms and they use any open source ASR model. ASR model is nothing but automatic speech recognition model. And they basically ha uh, they basically get the transcripts of whatever in is in the speech audios so now what we have is so we have the text right so once we take these waveforms and pass it through the asr model we're going to have the transcript uh, slash text that uh, corresponds to whatever is being spoken in this waveforms so then what we can do is we can compare that transcript to the actual transcript for this particular sample and then we can report out the result as a word error rate or as a blue score these are the two metrics that are mainly used so that's the technique that we are going to use as well now note that because we are going to be using an ASR model so the quality of the ASR model is going to impact our evaluation as well right because if the if the ASR model is is not so good then there is going to be error induced during during the evaluation step right because our transcript may not be matching what is in the audio so there is an error uh, that can be introduced during the evaluation step but let's just uh, keep that aside and assume that the ASR models that we're going to use are of high quality and so the error induced by the ASR is pretty low so let's just go with that assumption for now okay so what kind of ASR models can we use so in my case I simply used the whisper model and I have a video on my channel and I'll paste the link to that video in the description so we can use a whisper model and I used the whisper model. So basically what we will do is we will give these all, all of these audios one by one to the whisper ASR model. And then a whisper ASR model is going to give me the transcripts that are predicted by the whisper model. And then I can compare those transcripts to the actual transcript for each of these sample. And then I report the result as a WER or value score. Now there is actually one step that we have to do before we actually start using the ASR model. What is that step? So if I go back to the inference step and 
and I've mentioned this in the inference video in the last video, but I'm going to repeat just so we have a full picture. So remember when we created this text file during the inference, the naming of the sample here is not the name that I actually have in my data set. And, and it's probably the same case for your setup as well. So for example, this T1, H1, and then uh, and then whatever the numbers are here, T167. So basically it goes from zero through however many number of samples we have. So first we need to map this to the actual sample name that I had in my test set or you have in your test set so that we can actually compare the transcripts predicted by the ASR model with the ground truth transcript. So first we need to do that mapping. And the mapping is actually pretty simple. Again, we discussed this in the last video. So for the mapping, let's go back to our data folder, data root folder, and let's go back to the TSV files that we created. At this time, we are dealing with the test set, so we'll open up the test.tsv file. And as we know, in this TSV file, we have the mapping from the source audio to the discrete units in the, uh, for the target language. And also, uh, remember this was mentioned in the first video that the name of the sample in the source language and the target language must be same. So for, for example, this sample ID 1987-1, this is, this is the source audio. But then for the target audio, the sample name is the same. However, in this case, we just have a sequence of target discrete units, but not the actual waveform. So if we have to do the mapping, so mapping is basically whatever is the sample zero here, that corresponds to the first sample. And then whatever is sample one here, that corresponds to the sec uh, uh, second sample, so forth and so on. So the sequence here is what matches in the text file. So actually it's better to look at the unit file at this point. So let's go back and look at the unit file. Remember unit file has things already sorted. So this is the first uh, zero sample, zeroth sample, then first sample, uh, so forth and so on. So this target discrete units is what is predicted by the model for the first sample. And similarly, this is the sequence of target discrete units predicted by the model for the second sample. So that's how the mapping is done. So, so the mapping w was important, at least in my case, because I wanted to extract the ground truth transcripts for the uh, for the samples so that I can compare those ground truth transcripts for whatever is predicted by the ASR model. That's one step that we may, you may have to do in your case as well before you do the evaluation. So that is pretty much it for this video. And I'm not sure if I already mentioned, but I want to share this with you. Uh, so on the Hugging Face website, we have this open ASR leaderboard. So here they provide a nice summary of all the open source ASR models for the English language. And you can pick any of these models for your project, that speech to speech translation project when you evaluate that. In my case, this is, this is what I used. Again, you can pick any one you want obviously you would want to pick the best one because you don't want to induce the error due to the ASR um, during evaluation. So that was the one last thing that I wanted to mention. So that's all for evaluation and this also concludes the implementation of this paper called direct speech to speech translation with discrete units. I hope uh, this series of video was, uh, videos was helpful and I will continue to make videos in this domain and 
so please keep an eye out and if you are following my channel thank you and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to my channel and i would be happy to have you as part of my channel thank you bye